Okay, so this may well be a follow-up from the video I made for support for people who have sore mouths with cancer. And, and actually what I thought, you might find this more useful in, rather than references that you wouldn't look at. So, and I hope you find it reasonably kind of in, interesting and a distraction to what you're going through. And yeah, so yeah, I, I was looking for a slide showing Homer, say, of Homer with his brain. And it's got a tiny brain in there, but this is better and we'll come on to it. But, you know, clearly I just Google this. And um, so, you know, my memory's failing like everyone's. And, uh, but we got Google. So this is the, the first thing I was going to say is, is the book here is one I really like. And, and I thought, I'll look for a reference of when I read the book with the kids uh, on this particular beach, because I remember it distinctly. And when I put it in, it brought up a memory of where I go to in Portugal. But basically, the interesting thing about this book, which I often go back to because it's short and got big writing in it, it's, um, is that the guy that wrote it, uh, and again, if you just go on YouTube, he wrote it when he was on a, on a flight, I think, from... I think it was India to San Francisco, but it was just a long haul flight when you wrote this book. And uh, it's a great book. The thing that I remember about it was in order to get something, you have to give it away. So I think it's the law of giving. And there are a few of them, you know, law of potentiality, law of detachment. But I never remember this stuff. But that one sticks with me. And as you get older, it's far better to give than receive. Oh, and that's me. Oh, look me up on Instagram. I was talking about ultra-processed foods, I think, or something. Anyway, so this is how I thought, well, I can relate to you in that I have had some incidents in my life that could have uh, been life-threatening. The, 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 well, not life-threatening. Uh, the first one is when a couple of years out of qualifying, I managed to damage my eye. Uh, and so, yeah, wear eye protection, whatever you're doing, eye protection. Uh, the one with the blue arrows that I think was when I was about 33, I suppose. And I just started playing football for a more local team because, you know, I'm getting too old. And yeah, so I had a compound fracture uh, after a tackle. So it's a bit unusual for football. But my arm was a right mess. But I also remember then that the, the wrist was dislocated and it was in three bits. One bit, I don't know how it got there, but I haven't got the x-ray. Uh, anyway, so I had a fair bit of time off work with that. And you can see I've got my uh, Apple Watch there. And yeah, and the, and the one on the, 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 le the left you may have seen before, the bottom one, that's the hip. And I thought, well, when did I have it done? Well, um, you can see because it has information uh, and it varies. You get more and more information. So I must have had my first iPhone or an iPhone around then because it's got the date when it was taken. And it was, so this was the second hip operation because I had one in August 2007. And so I'm now in that period where I've had 15 years. And for that, I had six weeks off. And uh, the previous one, I had six weeks off. The arm, I had six weeks off twice. It was operated on twice. My eye, yeah, it was a weekend. I was fine on the Monday. And, but the best injury I ever had was this one, it was my finger. And um, I broke my finger. I didn't break my finger, but what was it? I'd had an accident. I have to say, unfortunately, it involved, I'd had a drink and I fell over. And uh, it turned up in work and my finger was swollen. And we were short staffed. And anyway, I, I couldn't get my gloves on properly. We started wearing gloves by then. We never used to wear gloves. And yeah, I couldn't get them on. And we, I ended up going to the doctor to see if I could have a, a you know, bit of time off. <laughs> while we were short-staffed and I couldn't get my gloves on. Uh, and one thing led to another, but basically I ended up going to the doctor, then to A&E, then to the hand unit. And I was really lucky that I went, because otherwise my finger would never have recovered. It would have stayed straight and stiff like one of my friends and I wouldn't have been able to work because that was on my right, arm, my, my right hand. Luckily when I broke my arm, it was my left, it was my left arm and I'm right-handed. And yeah, oh, anyway, obviously it was put my finger in between the, the slides I hope you're looking at and the cards that hopefully you'll get from a dentist one day. And yeah, when I broke my finger, that one was three months off. So I used the time and I must have just got my, my phone then because, yeah, 2003. God, that's 20 years ago. Jeez, 20 years ago. Anyway, they, they, I ended up my, my last 
period I had a couple of weeks on holiday, as you can see. You know where. And so, th and that was it. I said, you know, now we've got these photos, they're really yucky, lucky. So the top one I obviously scanned, but this is just to show how old I am. And for those of you who are younger, you know how things change. That is Bristol Airport. And um, I think it was on the way to a stag do, um, as you did back then. And the other one is I used to go windsurfing and um, yeah, I had a camper van. And I, I, I like that picture because it always says you're trying to look ahead. And uh, I used to have very colourful T-shirts. I, I need to go back to that. And at that time, uh, which is about 84, I got my Commodore 64. Because I was always a little bit interested in IT and computing. And it was a new thing and we had personal computers. Anyway, if you've got an iPhone 14, and I, and I just worked out, again, it's two million times more powerful than my Commodore 64. And I did do a little bit of programming on it. To those that ever played tele tennis, you could program that. And, you know, I, I, some people love coding. But I, I do, it was DOS, it was, it was hard work and it was dull. So back then you had to read books. And, um, well, you don't have to anymore. There's lots of IT support, and I'm sure you've all been on YouTube, you've definitely been on Facebook. But rather than um, listen to me, and I, well, I, well, I certainly wouldn't listen to me on how to do anything remotely with IT, but these guys are extremely good. So I don't know about PCs, but I've always, uh, for a variety of reasons, I, I went over to a Mac. I used to do desktop publishing when I started the practice in 95. I, I even used to have to repair the PCs and so it was just like Meccano, really. It sounds quite clever, but actually you just need to take slots out and put slots in. But on my Mac now, which is about to fall apart, you can't even add memory, so I'll have to buy a new one. I fell into their cunning trap. But these are the two people I would look at if you have a Mac, and sure, just go on. Find someone that you, you like with regard to a PC. And when it comes to learning stuff, uh, back in the day, the, the, the Apple you know, things got better and um, you could make a web using the software that was preloaded onto the Mac, but they've removed it. I think it was called iWeb. But anyway, so all the stuff I do now is through something called Weebly, which I think has been taken over by Squarespace or Wix. Or, and lots of things end up getting bigger, but not necessarily better. But yeah, the software, some of the software is fantastic. And if you want to learn about stuff, then you can go online. And so when I went to do my app, um, it's a, called an e-health product, so if you look at the bottom there, um, yeah, oh, it looks like uh, 2017, God. Anyway, yeah, that was probably one of the first ones that I looked at. Then there's the one on GDPR. That's why the app's way, made the way it is. There's no connection. And, you know, some of these things I, I've obviously been on a fair bit. Um, yeah, Agile, you, you, I think you would have seen that, but... I think Agile is also called Lean, you know, all these different things. And yeah, so I would recommend going on this and doing some courses just to, while well, you've got the time, I think that's what I was trying to say. I had plenty of time to do this uh, when I wasn't able to work because I can't watch telly for too long. So these are some of the TED Talks and these, is, these are since I uh, made the app. When if, so you'll find these first two, there's a website that, for the dentist to register on the app. And so all the dental team can register on it for free. Like Sir Ken Robinson, uh, he's famous for having the most uh, viewed um, TED Talk. So you can, see, you can see him on TED Talk and you can see him on um, YouTube and often YouTube have the TED Talk on. But these are great. Um, so have a look at him. And in it, there's a great explanation of God of what God looks like. It's it's really funny. But what he's talking about is that we all develop at later stages and we want to carry on using our skills. Some of us have different skills to others. And, you know, it's just... Just watch some of his videos. They're just fantastic. Jamie Hayward, and I think this must be quite an old video because even when I first saw it, it was old. But he's using um, MIT... So he's from, I think it's Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Anyway, uh, I think him and his a friend uh, work there, and they sort of 
um, decided to look into how they could improve health and health outcomes by going down a different route. And I think quite a few would be thinking about that. Um, and so again, that's really interesting. It's a little bit older now, but doesn't mean it's not less useful in its principles. Right, this one is about the power of habit. So, uh, so how habit works, as I would have said before, uh, the first person to sort of write down the habit loop was in advertising. So I think it mentions in this one, in this talk, and his name was uh, Claude Hopkins. And it's very simple. For things to work, they have to be simple. If something's complicated, it doesn't work. So the best thing about your, you know, your iPad uh, or your, your laptop is they tend to work so much better than they used to. It's been, you know, they're great. Peter Drucker, uh, I listen to him a lot. He's been dead quite some time. But when you talk about business, he's also talking about human behavior and how we are. And so, and to just to listen to him talk is fascinating. He's just got a great voice. Uh, and yeah, he was, again, he came across lots of um, American presidents also sought his advice. And he talks about the health service. I've got the clip somewhere. And he, uh, he says that the health service in the UK in the 60s was the envy of the world. And by the end of the 70s, it's lost its way. So I'm sure we all have different opinions on that. Uh, Simon Sinek, th 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 this is a YouTube video of, of his. I mean, uh, clearly it's, uh, this is on Keynote, so you can't look at the link, which is why I put the words down. If you just type in... His name, it'll bring up a load of uh, videos. Uh, I think this was the original YouTube one. Um, uh, and frankly, at that time, that would all be talking about his golden circle. But it's, um, he, talk, he has some really interesting stories that are often repeated. So like one was about how we, how we flew, or rather how we, there was a prize given to the first um, person who could get up in the air and fly to so many thousand feet or whatever. And as we know, it was the Wright brothers. And he talks about the academics and the money that were behind. Uh, oh, he had a really fancy name. Uh, but basically, it was a couple of people with no college degrees who just kept going out, trying something. When it failed, try again. And eventually, they won the prize. Uh, with very little acclaim, it has to be said, until more recently. And... The other one, Seth Godin, um, yeah, he, he's he, he's on YouTube a lot, and he's very good. And um, the, 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 the thing that I was particularly interested in was one of his more late books, later books, which was called, oh, This is Marketing. And really, we have a thing in our field, which is called ethical marketing. And yeah, so and that's what it's it's about, is... It's not abusing our position of power in some ways. And unfortunately, I think that happens quite a lot. But it's we're all responsible for that. But anyways, if you look at his book, um, it's it's all both of the, both of these guys have got their books as audio books. And, uh, and I've listened to them a few times. Whether it's had any benefit, I don't know. Right, but this these are the first one, but the, the interesting thing about both of these people is I email them and I got a reply. So the, in effect, they're both about sugar. Now, some of you might think sugar causes cancer. Uh, does it cause obesity? Mm, probably. <laughs> does it cause tooth decay? Mm, probably. Is it good for us? Mm, probably not. Um, but maybe okay in small doses. But anyway, so again, Marielle, uh, I'm not even going to attempt her surname. Um, it's a great talk, and she's passionate about what she does. And like me, she's retired. There are a few other dentists on uh, TED Talks, and, yeah, they're all elderly, reflecting on what's gone wrong. And uh, I keep coming across this. All people my age, a lot of people say, you know, back in the, the, the 80s, uh, dentistry was different. Well, it clearly was different, but we looked after an awful lot more people than we can now. And um, in the main, we looked after everyone extremely well. Where's it, where's it gone wrong? 
And yeah, so this one, uh, again, I haven't got the book, I've got the audio book. It's a long audio book and it's hard work, so do politics. But what she's achieved is pretty remarkable considering what she's up against. So the book, um, yeah, I probably get the book rather than the audio book here because it's, um, it, as I say, the audio book's quite a hard listen. And actually that's the thing about uh, TED Talks and a bit like this, you, after 20 minutes everyone switches off so the TED Talk's only 17 minutes long at maximum. So I'm not sure if Clayton Christensen, he did a TED Talk but I think he did back, anyway, I'm not sure but his talks all revolve around the same thing later on. So if you put that in and put in health, he's also got quite religious, strong religious views. Um, but he talks about how we can improve health and we haven't taken it on board. That's the annoying thing. Um, if anyone looks at my video on, not my video, I do blogs. So I did a blog on oral, uh, on cancer delivery and certainly for there are lots of things that we can use technology for but the, the regulation just gets so far in the way we need regulation but not that it stifles um, innovation oh yeah and the, the TED talk by Mark Ronson well you know that's, that's got nothing to do medically but guys it you think this guy's you know oh he's just a musician but I just I've only seen it the once but I just remember being blown away thinking now that is clever Okay, so podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts from a variety of sources. And these are a relatively new thing for us, aren't they? So there's one there by Ray Kurzweil. Somehow they do a podcast that's actually, you can view. But um, but yeah, so have a look at that. Uh, but certainly look him up um, when he's talking about singularity. And yeah, so you just saw Clayton Christensen. So... Again, he's got a really quite a good, a good voice to listen to. And you can see, sadly, he died. I mean, that's what happens to all of us in the end. Um, but he left a, a huge uh, volume of work and a huge volume of videos. But his ideas, um, we should embrace. This is Ray Kurzweil's thing. Uh, he's all about technology. And, um, and yeah, I think there was... There's another person whose podcast I think we'll come up to and is talking roughly about the same thing. But just, you know, as before, you can pause and look at and see if you agree with this graph. I did one similar to dentistry. The one thing that I did was that with ours was put a line on human behavior to see how it would compare. I think, you know, the line will be pretty steady. <laughs> and podcasts. So th these uh, Reith Lectures, I've listened to quite a few of these. And I listen to them when I'm out cycling um, when I'm not on the road, but when I'm in the middle of the forest, in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, and yeah, the, the, the Jonathan Sumption. So the, the interesting thing about these are what his opinion with regards to health and medicine. And he talks about 100 years ago, we had the same number of doctors and lawyers qualifying. And now we have, I think it's six or eight times as many lawyers to medics qualifying. And clearly there's, the balance is way out of tilt and the, the lawyers have got to work and one field of activity they're in big time is getting people to sue for negligence. So we, you know, we sue the health service and we all pay for the health service. So that doesn't seem to make any logical sense. If you talk to pilots and, you know, every course you go on, they talk about learning from your mistakes and having an open culture. Uh, so if it's good enough for airplanes, uh, we're losing our way a bit when it comes to health. And with regards to lawyers, um, I think when I started, there was obviously there's some degree of litigation, but now we've overtaken big time the American culture. And yeah, the payouts, two thirds of the money goes to lawyers. And the, the way our dental defense unions work, we just spend thousands <laughs> on protection. It's just daft. Um, Anyway, so his opinions on that. What can you do about it? I don't know. The, the other one's Michael Sandel. I haven't listened to this one, but it is 2009. I just looked at the headline because it was about doing the common good, I think his first talk. And he's brought a book out recently, which is 
is always talking about the common good, and it's called the tyranny of merit. And what, what, uh, and it really does make good sense. Um, and so we have awful lots of problems. So that's an audible... Someone's probably downloaded it and you can get it illegally, but I did buy the book uh, as an audio book, and it's, it's, it's a great read, if not just just depressing when you yeah it's, it is depressing in parts but we have to take a more active role if you want to improve things and he has some ideas but whether people can follow through Grace and Perry I started to listen to this and I thought it'd be really poor if ever anything turned me around from someone who I thought a bit was a bit odd and not particularly good this was it when you listen to him getting questions at the end think my god you know your stuff um and yeah i like art and his pottery yeah it's, it's great S some of his ideas i'm not quite sure about the teddy bears and the motorbikes but what an interesting guy and that's what we want art for so the other podcasts on bbc right desert island discs they're always a good listen um and to another guy said but this one i think it's after the sixth song I always tell people to listen to, to this one because he talks about being clever, he talks about being depressed and he talks about quite a few things but that yeah, that hammers home and um, yeah uh, being bright isn't always you, you're born bright, it's like a gift um, other things we can all work on and that's what he's talking about the fant and Tulican Brothers. Right, so these, you probably see them on YouTube. I come to them quite late. But this is the podcast about uh, UPCs and UPFs, the ultra-processed food, ultra-processed drinks that I'm sure all of you know about. But it was sort of relatively new to me. And that other picture of me riding my bike, I think I was talking about that. Or I might have been talking about soda politics or something. So, yeah, you know... You know these things are wrong, but but the biggest business in the world is I think it's it's like seven trillion is the food business in in the UK. That's the amount of money in it, and so to think that if the food lobbyists are going to suddenly say, "Oh, that's fine, that's not healthy, we're going to make it anymore," that's not going to happen. Um, and and also the government, you know, I was driving up to the a dental conference up in Birmingham earlier in the year, and the government u turned on the sugar on the sugar tax. Oh, you, you just couldn't make it up. And the one thing was that when they, if they brought it in incrementally, like you do for lots of things, it actually has a beneficial effect, is that the food companies just try to get down, get the sugar level down a little bit, and next time you move the goalposts and move it a little bit more, we might get there, but we have to work together. And this one's sl the sliced bread, right? <laughs> so this was only last week. So uh, there are lots of fantastic stuff out there. And so he, uh, I was interested in this because as a dentist, um, you know, this is, this is fantastic, isn't it? You know, giving people Botox and, and giving injections here and there. But the long-term effects, I'm sure in 20 years' time, people are saying, what on earth are we thinking? You know, it's gone mad. Um, anyway, it's, 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 it's really good when you listen to the actual ex experts talking about it, and I might well be wrong. Uh, but I don't think so. Oh yeah, smoking. Yeah, that ages you. Maybe stop smoking. I clearly don't smoke. <laughs> Probably say differently if I was. So yeah, these podcasts I've also listened to relatively recently, and I come to them really late. Uh, but th this this is this year, so I've got like many years to go back and look out on. But the one top left at all. Um, yeah, so he's talking about. He talks about his dad, actually, who, yeah, it sadly died when he fell off the bus. He was 110. <laughs> what a way to go. I want to go on the golf course. I've got, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's a different thing altogether. Um, but, yeah, the, he's very high up within, uh, I think, his world, world health. But a fantastic talk. The, this one, Eric Topol, that's the one that was really of interest in the, when he talks about again, he's as it says there, he's he's lots of uh, publications, and, and unfortunately that's how you have to get on, and that's why we have so many publications. I think it's about two million a year published 
uh, and audited, and that's the way medics work. And you know, all these academics is getting work published. It's far better to get one good piece done than uh, a few hundred or a few thousand average ones. Wasn't it uh, Darwin took 20 years before he did Origin of the Species or something? Anyway, I don't know. But the interesting thing about this guy is that whilst I'm playing around trying to make it possible that your, your phone will be able to make copied dentures, and certainly that you can use your phone to send pictures about your mouth so we can tell you that it's only an abscess ulcer and not a cancer. Um, he's now aware and tested himself with a device on his phone that does ultrasound on all his body. Right, so you know what you use ultrasound for. <laughs> it, the only thing he can't ultrasound is his, um, is his brain, but we know it's a big one. And the other thing that they can do is it take, and, and so they started this now, they reckon it'll be ready in, in five years' time, is you can use the phone to take photos of the retina at the back of the eye, and it'll be able to give you a really good indication of your general health. So lots of these digital innovations are coming forward, and we need to not become hypochondriacs, but if we can't get in to see the doctor, you know, the, the, the watch I've got on my, on my arm, it does um, a really good uh, pulse measurement. I don't mind, it's an older version, so it doesn't do oxygen levels, um, but you can get them that do that. It doesn't do my blood pressure, but you can get some that do that. It does produce a, a heart trace. It'll tell me if I go into a flutter and stuff like that. So very soon, we'll be able to more or less get up in the morning, put your watch on and decide whether you should get up or whether you should stay in bed. And that's been the case for a while. They've got mirrors that do that kind of thing. This one, the uh, the one about pandemics, and yeah, he did the film Contagion. That's talking about how um, there's going to be another pandemic, you know, definitely. Uh, we just don't know when, and we ought to be better prepared for it. We had, was it Mars and SIRS 10 years ago, and we should have been ready, and then we thought, oh, we'll be all right. Um and also, when you listen to some of the um, you hear podcasts from people involved in developing the virus, and the, 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 they did fantastically well, these, um, you know, there's no doubt that the, the, the people working on the virus did remarkably well, but the, the support they sometimes got from the politicians was not what it should be or not what it was uh, shown to be. Um, and we ought to be better prepared. And really, yeah, the, the whole health thing should be taken out of politics. But this this chap Mark Cuban and and I listened to him, uh, and I haven't finished listening to it. And it basically it went off on one because he's really interested in his, in his basketball. But he, he's talking about how much money, uh, pharmaceutical companies make, and I'd have to l listen to it again to to look at the name of the company that he's got in the states, and they started selling, um, pharmaceuticals for like an eighth of the eighth of the cost. Uh, as they were. So, as you know, when you go abroad, like uh, I got stuck in India, when I was stuck in India, you look at the price of uh, of medication there. It's it's buttons. So when you're paying, um, you know, ten pound for your prescription or whatever it is, I'm retired. I don't pay for them anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, and but you can buy the same medication out there for twenty p for a course of that. It makes you think. You know, government are getting money from your prescription. There's lots of things that aren't great. Oh yeah, and these are quite. These are on Spotify, so I've, I've I struggled to download them at first, and I come across them purely by accident. I don't know how I did it, but the, these are great podcasts. And yeah, so I think a lot of you will be looking for reasons um, you have the condition, and also, you know, slightly outside the box. And so these are a few, and some are outside the box. Oh, David, no, it, it's not outside the box. He, so this one, uh, I, even though the words in front of me, I struggle to say it. I all just know it's magic mushrooms, but the uh, Silas Hyben, uh, yeah, some great work with this. And when you look at the history, that they would, uh, my, my age, I remember that when everyone was tripping on LSD, uh, I missed out on that. Um, but the, the thing about it was the, the actual sort of research in it 
was stopped by the American government, more or less, and then it become, you know, a lot as with cannabis, you know, so we were using cannabis a lot more, but the, the research on it is really poor. Well, the research on it is really poor, uh, probably because the pharmaceutical companies wouldn't make that much money out of it. And so there are a couple of books that I've probably come across soon, and they explain why we're in the mess that we are. This one on alcoholism, it's unfortunately it's too near the knuckle. And But the, the one thing that she does is she talks about how this works for her, how she uses uh, opioids to control her addiction. And it, it's such a complex thing. Um, my dad had dementia, and so I listened to loads of podcasts uh, trying to work out what was happening with the brain and what could happen. And unfortunately, it just seems irreversible and then the only thing I worked out was well I started taking a statin even though my cholesterol was a little bit it was reasonably high and was keeping it at bay but then I thought this isn't great and um, I'm just so the spit of my dad um, and so it m make logical sense to start taking a statin in case you know just so it may help the other thing was that I didn't smoke uh, like my dad did um, although he gave up like for 30 years and also, he was a really good header of the football. And he used to play with the old leather ball, and he was a, played for Liverpool for a period. And, yeah, half the, um, was it, the, the World Cup team from 1966 ended up with dementia. Hmm. wonder why. And, yeah, so these, again, the, 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 I've got the book from Steve Peters, and yeah, there's the picture again. I'm not. I'm not going to press the button in case he, he doesn't wiggle the Homer, but he he talks about how the, the how the brain works, and it it's fascinating, in that it kind of explains to me how people, who, how people behave, uh, sometimes well and sometimes poorly, and um, yeah. So yeah, what it, it just listen to him when he's talking about that the, this isn't the if you go into youtube he does a talk to about to the students in manchester i think which is a really good talk look i don't think he's on ted talk which is why it isn't there but he might be um so yeah and that explains t to a large degree how the brain kind of works and how you you know as you would say you kick off um so that's a good way and it's difficult for you to control yourself but that might be something that's useful and Henry Marsh, so he did uh, the book Do No Harm. And in the book, so I've, yeah, I think I've read his book. I must have read it. Most of my books seem to have got thrown out. But this, his, his book was really good. I just remember him giving a talk on, um, he said he gave a talk in the States on his failures. And he said the hall went quiet and everyone was disinterested. But we learn far more from our mistakes than we do from, you know, our success in a way. And, and we need to share them. We don't want to be making the same mistakes. That's the whole thing about the black box on airplanes. And we just don't have it with health. Um, and sadly, now, so this talk will be a talk about he's now got prostate cancer. And he hasn't got long. I think this is this is only two months old, this video. A video yeah, this video. And I, I remember listening, saying that he he had the symptoms looking back. And he didn't do anything about it. And as I would have said before, my brother had no symptoms. If he'd have waited till he had the symptoms, he wouldn't be here now. And um, again, it's probably a money-saving thing brought out by someone. Right, well, I have read some books, and I was trying to dig them out. So The Lean Startup, that's all about um, Agile um, and how... And how you know how IT sort of works in a way, and how they can develop things rapidly. So, yeah, and you need feedback loops for that. And we're just so slow on it. Our dementia. Well, clearly, I've got an interest in that. Um, oh yeah, and the book. You know, that book is by the guy who did Richard Sounds, and uh, and yeah. He, I think he's given away half the company already to his em his employees. <laughs> so, uh, so it's it's a really nice read. It's not a big book, but it's a really nice read. And then the the, the big book I put it aside is the one 
on Steve Jobs. And I remember reading that on my way back from, I think I was going from Australia to Japan and Japan home. So instead of watching the films, I read the book. Right, now, Steve Jobs, an interesting guy. Unfortunately, I think he died from pancreatic cancer. Um, and he was obviously desperate to find a cure. Uh, and, he, and he didn't. And, I, and, I, and that's one that I just think that's, yeah, like all cancers, but that's a bad one. Um, anyway, in it, he talks about opening his shop. So I just remember this distinctly. And you think, why don't we do it for health? He decided that he would go back to kind of first principles and see what people want and how people behave and how to make the process easier. All the stuff that you still want in health. And you just think, you know, if someone just started from scratch and say we're going to produce something as a health service for this sort of uh, period of time, how should we do it? So his shops have the biggest, uh, what is it called, Bis biggest income per square foot of any shop, I think. It might, you know, any physical shop, I suppose online retail now is slightly different. But that, that was, that's what's fascinating. The other thing was he just pinched people's ideas, quite frankly. Um, there's one story in there about, that we don't have them anymore, actually, the, but the mouse he got from Rank, and he bought f uh, a product from Rank with the, what's it called, the IP and uh, the patent. And he, he wasn't interested in the photocopy. He was interested in the, in the mouse. And then he put it with the iMac that I got. And so he just kind of saw the potential for one product and used it for another. So there are so many examples of that. But he just got to think slightly different. The other thing about him was he yeah, he went to India, I think, and he, he sort of learned calligra calligraphy there. And so all the fonts were originally on the Apple. I mean, you get them on all computers now. But that was one of the sort of standout things for the... Apple computers when they first came out. And it's because he, he learned calligraphy. Um, he got his mate to do all the coding, wasn't he, Ak? Yeah, and so these phones, so I don't know if he envisaged, so after the phone came iTunes and, and then we got apps and stuff like that. But it's a bit like tobacco and a bit like alcohol. If you suddenly invented it, would you let kids have it? Would you let adults have it? So I always thought, you know, I have big problems with this in that I'm probably addicted to my phone. Uh, we all look at it. I watched the football last night. I kept looking at my phone to see what my mates thought. And, yeah, I think children, you know, we're always worried about them. I used to walk to school uh, for a mile in Liverpool when I was six. And, um, yeah, so we always walked to school. Uh, never had a phone but I think, you know, it's different now. So I give the phone on the left to children and say they can't have a, a smartphone until they're 18, you know, because the mental health side, I'm sure these are a real cause. However, uh, you can get apps, and, uh, and some of them are really good. So the, the, the food scanner, I think that's a really good one. I like to say I use it, but I have used it, but I don't do the shopping anymore. Um... Yeah, and the, and the medical ones, I mean, again, they're extremely useful. So the, the the skin cancer one, that's interesting. So I've had that on my phone for a long time, but you you have to pay for it. And so it's uh, it's really, the, I think it's doctors who pay for it. Um, but really, it's, it's one of those things we should be monitoring ourselves on the, on the health service for that. It, it should be free. Some company's going to make a fortune out of it. Uh, the Anyscope, that, that's, um, that's a camera I'm messing about with, which is, um, you can use it in your mouth. So the, the phones now take such great pictures of your mouth, you just need a little video on how to move your, your, you know, your soft tissue out of the way, so you can get a reasonable photo, and then you just send it to us. Teledentics, that's an American company that, um, that used teledentistry out there. It's extremely complicated and extremely expensive but again we should be able to do that for free if we had the you know if we just had the oh, structure i guess um yeah so more and more we're using these products but we don't want to become hypochondriacs with them do we but we certainly want to encourage them 
Oh yeah, and I thought, well, I better throw it. And, and they, they take great videos, don't they? So this one, I'll start playing it. But I was wondering when it when it was done. So this is this is ten years ago in March. Oh, I didn't realise I had the volume on. But I'm telling them to get going because we're on quite a steep slope. Don't do anything rash like throw the camera at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So that was uh, yeah, skiing. I was clearly off piste, clearly a bit steep, but I'm here to tell the tale. And so are the kids. Yeah, in that, in that picture, I think I'd had my hips done two years before. Um, yeah, so my hips have been great. Right, so uh, these are some audio books. They were, they were, I was surprised how many there were, but I think th this is the first ones that I bought. So the Startup Way, I was told to buy that by a guy when I was talking about my app, uh, or considering an app, and he said, well, you want to look at this first, and I'm extremely grateful for that because it is a, it's a great book when you're trying to develop a, well, an app or some bit of software, I suppose, but it's way out of my, my knowledge. <laughs> uh, I probably would have gone with the company, except when it came to the crunch and they were going to help me make it, they, they wanted to charge the public. And that's one of those things about, I think it's Simon Sinek, about why it was, the principle was to give, give it, get something available for free. You know, all the advice I've had on YouTube has been for free. And there are some things that you know, money can't buy and, and we shouldn't need to be, be charging people f just to give them the, some education. Right, the innovator's dilemma, yeah. So that, obviously that was how you look at things differently, look at his video. Yeah, Dale Carnegie, well, it was, that's just brought up to date. I'd, I'd, the Seven Habits, I remember buying that book. And that would, you know, that's, that book must have been at, at least 25 years, 30 years ago. But the big thing about that was always a win-win. And, uh, and that's actually, that's how I designed the app. So the app can be personalized by the public. So it gives them something to look at rather than a website where it's just giving you the information. So you can, you know, the idea is that you can uh, take back control and improve your health using gamification by, you know, in an ideal world, you think, oh, I'm on the yellow, I want to get in the green. But that, that's one of the, the good things about that, a win-win situation. Habit, you know, I talk about these things as if, you know, <laughs> I do all of them. Uh, yeah, I... When we had lockdown, I did my 30 days of yoga, and that was great. Uh, when I had bad hips, I used to do yoga um, just to try and keep myself moving. Uh, and, you know, after I'd had my hips done, well, I didn't really seem to need to do it. TED Talks, yeah, well, that was, uh, that's the chap who started taking it over, and that, that, that's a really interesting sort of book. But it says, you probably, hopefully this is, you've turned this off and turned it back on again, but yeah, 20 minutes is enough of listening to someone talk. So these are other books with it, other ones within it. So if I go from top left, I'll use the mouse. These are really good. Ruby Wax is really interesting and she's taken on board. We all know she's had issues and she's happy to share them. And that's, yeah, I think a lot of the times, you know, we're unable to talk about things. And certainly mental illness, you know, it is an illness. Um, yeah, and, we, and, and it's just so poorly dealt with. We can't afford to, we, we just can't, basically, we can't af afford it. And we've, you know, I think the phones cause it. And just recently they, they've, yeah, for that, that poor girl who killed herself, it was in the news yesterday, and they've watered down the arrangement. The, anyway, HBRs, they're really good. So in this one, you listen to Peter Drucker talking and the, and the other chap, uh, Clayton Christensen. And they, they, so these are really good. And you know, the things that apply for a business apply to yourself, and that's what's interesting. So, yeah, there's another one, the, the non-profit organisation. Um, I have no problem with that. I've definitely got no profit. But, um, but yeah, that, you know, that's very good. I mean, they, so bad science. So was that the first one? No, I think I read Bar Bad Farmer first. So one of them's 13 hours long, which I remember listening to when I drove from my, my house in Portugal at Sands Ground. But I drove from Portugal uh, to a friend's in Spain. And yeah, it took the book, the distance there and back took the book. That's frustrating. 
and Jeeves. Ah, they're just great. They're funny. Right, start with why. Yeah, I, I've I've listened to that quite a few times. Uh, the story about uh, the Wright brothers is, is is clearly from there. This one I'd heard. I can't quite remember that one. Uh, and the butterfly effect. Yeah, that's what you're all hope for in a way, and how these things happen. So lots of these books are full of examples, and you get repeat examples in the end. Uh, Hitch, right? Christopher Hitchens. I come to him very late. This book though is just. It's just brilliant. But when you listen to him on uh, on YouTube, he's all over it. He's just, I'm sure he might have been hard work <laughs> if he ever met me. <laughs> he would have pulled me up on my English, that's for sure. Um, but what a clever guy and so, f so interesting. And how he's stood his ground <laughs> and some of these debates, I think they're really, really good. It's a shame that he, he died, you know. Smoke every time you see him, he's got a cigarette and a and a drink probably. The silent guides, right? This is the same as the uh, the chimp paradox. So really, the silent guides is f <laughs> it's not thick print with pictures, but it is really it's it's for children, but it's for the parents of children. It's a fantastic book. I wish I'd had that book when I had children. You you, you must read his book or at least listen to him on the podcast. He, what he says is. So, so true. Right, so John Cooper Clark, that well-known medic, yeah. Uh, the heroin addict, yeah. Uh, so this is him talking about his poetry. So you probably have to buy this. If you listen to, to him on Desert Island Discs, it is so funny. You've never met anyone so pleased to be on Desert Island Discs. Um, yeah, and so the, the brain of... I'm not sure if I, if I listened to that one. Outliers I did because he, his, his stuff is very, very good. Uh, I think he's the, he did the um, Bad Farmer as well, I think. Am I getting confused? Yeah, the element is, is uh, Ken Robinson talking royally about what your interests are and what you can do. Oh yeah, I was wrong about that. Blink is Michael Gladwell. And yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I remember some of the stuff. <laughs> My, the Tyranny of Merit, I've, 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 read, I've listened to a couple of times. Um, oh, I, can't listen, I definitely haven't listened to it all. But the, the, the last chapter is, is, is really sort of relevant. And uh, the problems they have in the state. Uh, I didn't put this down. Is it, is it Oxycoxin or something like that? Oh, it's, anyway, it's the pharmaceutical company. The Sacklers, where they got all their money from. Was, if you look it up, and it's also called Purdue, I think. I couldn't find the... The video, uh, not the video, the audio podcast about it, and it is just appalling. It is really just appalling about how, how the pharmaceutical mo company did so much damage. So they have a statistic that more people die. Um, I think it's almost every day from uh, the consequences of their marketing than died in the Vietnam War. It's just terrible stuff. Yeah, in terms of emotional intelligence. Yeah, I obviously did that a while ago. And Tim Ferriss, yeah, he'll be all over podcasts. And, yeah, I mean, he's someone who is motivational, but he did have a very dark period, which he's quite happy to talk about. Uh, yeah, the Harvard Business Review, I can't remember if this was a good one or one that was a, or lost interest in, but this is marketing, and this is a brilliant book. And it is really sort of ethical marketing, and um, and it, so it has its role. Uh, I'd, I'd, we, we do worry about health, and there's something. Yeah, there, in in the week magazine uh, yesterday, there's an article about people who had uh, extensions on their legs. Well, my partner in work had that done because he broke his leg, skiing of course, quite well, very badly, and it ended up one and a half inch shorter than the other. So he had an operation done on it, and it was successful. If, even though I've known of people who had it, and it was unsuccessful, and they lost their leg. And and the, in the, the article yesterday, it was talking about people who want to be may have their legs extended. And yes, it can be done, uh, but just because it can be done, should it be done? And yeah, oh, it can be done because it cost, I think it was, it was like 500,000 pounds, or maybe dollars, so it was cheap. 
but you know just because you can doesn't mean you should and that certainly applies to what's going on in dentistry now yeah it's a bad farmer yeah i definitely read that it's just such a depressing read uh, there was an uh, article I was looking up for treatment of mucositis, and I never put it in the the little video that I made. But basically, one of the outcomes of bad pharma that was really good is they've started to tell people that um, I think they only ever published anything if it was successful. So, of course, over 75% of stuff was never published. So what they do now is if they're going to start a trial, they have to publish the start point um so people know that they're doing it because we can learn by mistakes if it doesn't work then it doesn't work then there's no point doing the same thing twice and um and yeah so the articles that i was looking at for relieving mucositis they've been started uh, they've been going for a few years but they haven't been published nudge uh the final edition well nudge i bought that years ago when it must be years ago because i got it when cameron was in power and he gave it as um reading for the government uh, you know when they go on their summer recess it was the book and it's it's uh, i mean it's some of this stuff is really it's so clever but it's so simple so the one i always remember is how when you go to the cash machine which seems to be getting less and less now um yeah you can't you have to take out your card first before you get your money and that's nudge <laughs> uh yeah innovation there was a good book and a bad book, but I'll come to the good book in a minute for sure. Uh, Soda Politics, uh, yeah. So as I said, these are audio books. Um, yeah, that's just a long read, but it's it is good. But it's again, it's it's a bit of a battle for it, and it was, a, it was a, yeah, a bit of a hard read. Now beware of the dog. Now I'm pretty sure I got this as a a book to read. Uh, so I'm not sure if I've got muddled up here, um, but th that but that's all about. Um, yeah, he he had a, abuse, and he also, I think he had depression. There's a great video on black dog. If you're depressed, and it explains the, the when the black dog comes, where I think the term was invented by Churchill. But anyway, right. And I stuck in the autobiography of Bertrand Russell because I never finished it, but. But I nearly did, but it's like, that's right, it was on my iPad, and it's like 2,000 pages long. And what he did is he, st he was obviously a great letter writer, and he also put in his, um, you know, the letters are in the book as well. And um, it's like, he was, yeah, he was banned from the States, and he was banned from Russia. Um, and I saw him, I think it was on Parkinson, you know, back in the day, uh, and... I think the easiest way to, to, to know about this would be to watch Zalig, Woody Allen film, where this person props up it crops up in all these odd circumstances that were world events. But he did, and obviously he was big into C N D. And in his eighties, he um yeah, he was asked by students in Oxford to go through their publications because he was the only one that understood them. So initially he did maths. I just obviously incredibly clever. And when you saw him on Parkinson, incredibly entertaining. So Nudge, yeah, that's, as I mentioned that before, that is, that is really good, how, you know, incremental change. So the, the one that you probably all hopefully be affected by is, is, is with pensions, is just putting a, a pension 1% each year, you know, so you put in a certain way, am, amount of way. Unfortunately, the way things are going, I think younger people will continue to work it's uh, that's probably not quite as fair as it should be yeah this was seven spiritual laws well i bought the book but i also <laughs> i've got it to listen to um yeah yes as, as i say i think some of these have got muddled up right homo deus yeah that's very good i've also read homo sapiens i'm not a big reader it's just that i'm really old and um but the thing about this is, what, so he's got m lots of memorable quotes within it, this chap, uh, and if you look them up. But the one I remember was how uh, in the 40s and 50s, when the health service was brought in, it was because people were suffering from malnutrition. And now, as you're all aware, about 30% are taken from people who have a problem with obesity and diabetes. And their conditions 
really cause oh, go over to soda politics have a word with her uh, and the, the, the talk about uh, UPFs is fascinating because it talks about someone who yeah they're able to find hormones and it's incredible so the stuff in food as you know um, for ultra processed food it depreciates what's it it lowers by 30 percent um <laughs> even though i read it it was quite difficult to work out but basically you're hungry for for longer and uh you feel full for less time and it's to do with hormones so they show the hormones that produce that all right so clearly uh, i can't remember but but yeah we shouldn't have them or shouldn't have many of them Delivering better oral health. Now that's a fascinating read. Um, yeah, it's 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 it, it it gets updated every few years, and so what some clever person's done is put it all into video, so you can watch it on your phone, in two minute stints rather than read the book. The other one who isn't here is the the, the white or green paper on prevention, in health, and um, yeah, I made a video on that as well, but basically. Uh, dentistry gets a, hardly a mention and water fluoridation we've been kicking the ball around for over 40 years and we shouldn't be doing that <sighs> right the design of everyday things when you're making a product um, you ought to read this and again it's um, it's keeping things simple um, I can't say that you know I've read the book so I'm, I'm an expert I've read the book so I don't know um, and that's where we, yeah, we had um, a rather, I went, since I retired, I've had some help with different courses. And one of them was on product design and one was on interviewing the, the, the public to sort of the design process, which is something I never did for my app. And so even though I, I look at it and think it's great, people may find it a bit complicated. And that's what this is all about is asking people who don't know and observing people and and as with all things a lot of it isn't what people say it's how they respond all right art well, i thought about art in um because sometimes dentistry is a bit of an art i like to think it's a science but really it's a combination of the two anyway it's just an excuse to show my art uh, which is really poor i have to say but then a lot of art is poor. So th these are some pictures that I, I, I did give a talk to some trainers uh, oh, about eight years ago. I said it'd be their Christmas treat. But often we get together and the talks weren't that interesting really. They were basically about how the first year students or first year dentists were getting on in our practice. Anyway, so, th you know, I could use a computer. So I put them on Keynote and put did a slideshow. So I won't bore you with the slideshow, but this this is um, going back to when I broke my finger. I did these, and I remember distinctly doing them because I'd seen an artist in um, oh where is it? Hey, not Hay on Y, or the Y Valley, Forest of Dean. Yeah, where you have six fingers apparently. Anyway, in the Forest of Dean, I had and what they did was they did a picture, and when it was still wet, they rolled it onto the other one. And that's how you get this kind of image. So, so that's what I did. And then, yeah, later on, I, I took photos and added a moon or a sun or something. But anyway, they still look up on the wall and they make me chuckle every day I see them. And this was, so this was also a copy. But as you can see, it wasn't a great copy. So the one on the left probably is worth about 30 million. And the one on the right, well, worth a bit less. It, but I... I Anyway, and I run out of paint. If only I could have afforded more paint, it would have been pollocks as opposed to bollocks, but it's up on the wall. And also, so I stuck this in. All right, one of the, if you go, yeah, if you go onto that website, you'll see a link to my other website, but we should have a dental health service. So top marks, if you thought, well, that looks like an Andy Warhol. It, it, well, it is, but it's, um, well, you know, I did it. And, oh, right, so this is why I did it, is to remind me of some other art. So you're allowed to take pictures now. And Miro must have gone through a great deal of effort to draw these lines. And also, it looks like the ornament in, that you put in the garden. 
it, it, you know, Yossi Hughes would say, I could do that. And I did. Well, I didn't really. But but what the, the, the reason I put the pictures of Miro in is I remembered I was in Parma and I, the, it's, it's a funny link, but my wife was in the shower, so I thought, oh, she's going to be a while. And I had my iPad and um, I come across this things called um, brushes. It's now called Brushes Redox, I think. And I'd, and I'd started with the idea of thinking I could make an app that would be facing the, the patient. So all the apps I'd looked at at that time we're just basically promoting the practice, not nothing to do with the, the the patient, the user. And so I thought, well, I'll have to have a, a logo. And so you can see, I kind of had to go up painting the logo and uh, trying in different colours on the iPad. And then when I showed the idea eventually to uh, a proper graphic designer, that's what he came up with, the one that you can see. And of course now with QR codes, well, I made the QR code. So if you, if you scan that, that would bring up the care for teeth um, dot org website so it's funny how you learn these things and um, and so when I was out there I don't think it was out there but at some stage I decided that uh, I'd make a picture from for m my daughter whose name bizarrely is Rebecca and um, I showed the picture to a friend and when I showed it to her, it did a rather strange thing it, it kind of repeated what I'd done and so I was surprised as she was. I mean, clearly she was really impressed with my art. Um, but that's what it was. And uh, it, it showed what I'd done as quickly as that. So that I thought, well, that's interesting. But I'd never seen it before. I did the picture like eight months before. I thought, well, that'll, that'll come in useful. So you can see what I did here. So it's, it's difficult when we discuss cancer and show horrible pictures. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, it's not a horrible picture. And clearly you'd have thought, oh, there's something wrong here. But what I did is, I, so I made it using brushes and then I put it onto iMovie um, and then I probably, well, I definitely reversed it. And you can see it on the, on the app, along with a few others, showing what oral cancer looks like. And yeah, you can see, so it was done on, it would have been done on my iPad and the, little red button you work out you press that and that's how you record and so you learn these things as you go along so I did it yeah I did another one so this has a story behind it because this uh, is uh, I think it's called the Taj Palace Hotel I normally couldn't afford this <laughs> I definitely couldn't afford it but I stayed in there for uh, over three weeks when I got stuck in India and uh, yeah, I don't think this is, you're going to be lucky, but you can see what I was having to go at. And clearly, you know, I was using my thumb, that's my excuse, but you know, it's not great. Oh yeah, I don't know, just playing around with the keynote. Right, but um, yeah, so I'd gone on holiday with friends to India because uh, it was my tennis partner's 60th birthday. I'd already turned 60. And we ended up going to India. So we all went around on a bus for a fortnight. It was brilliant. But I, <laughs> one thing and another, I got stuck. And we got stuck because of COVID. And that's a whole different story because some of this, yeah, the dentists carried on working when we should have finished a lot sooner. Uh, and I think it was because if we'd have worked another week, there would have been a huge clawback of money from dentists. And it was, it's typical government interfering with what is health. And, you know, there are different ways you can look at these things, but that was poor. My nurse shouldn't <coughs> have been near the building because uh, her husband was, as you would say, um, or was it being shielded? It, it, the whole thing was, was poor. My, yeah, and when I was out there, my friend, uh, who was an ENT, a professor of ENT, he'd had a couple of colleagues die. Um, you know, because of COVID, it was a messy time. And when I was, anyway, when I was out there, you can see the picture at the bottom right. So I, I've been stuck in my room. Well, I was stuck in the hotel. There is no way on earth I would say it was a hardship. Um, so we were, again, I was just lucky. Uh, but I was, I'd started playing around making pictures because people don't like looking at teeth. And, um, you know, so I was trying to make little designs. And that, 
and not Steve Jobs, but it was it was a case of, well, actually that might work, and uh, it might come in useful to making little videos for the app. And yeah, so these are some more pictures. So these are, I actually made these uh, to show how a toothpaste works, the biomin. So it's a great toothpaste, and again, I, I'm not going to show you the pictures. I think some of them are within the app, but not, not by no means all. But if you if you <laughs> can I bring my mouse? So this one is is, is something, is that um, this is what kind of happens when you if you're sick, a lot you lose the enamel off the tooth, and that's, and so for those patients, I'd, there's not much you can do really, but I'd I'd scan the tooth and then just added a bit on. Uh, and it, the, the hybrid material, because I was using a scanner at the time. But these, you, you can't see them, but they're, they're, they're the reverse. Uh, but you get these little holes in teeth and uh, in these dentinal tubules. It's really exciting stuff, dentistry. And, um, and yeah, so what the, the, the main way to stop sensitivity is to fill in the gaps, and that's what people think. And um, going back to the... So the, the, in the biome, in the particles are, are meant to be the blue ones, which are the novamin. The green, um, sorry, the, they must be the biomin. The green must be the novamin, which is in sensodyne. And so that's why biomin's better. But also it releases, as well as fluoride, it releases potassium and calcium. And they're the bits that are missing out the saliva. And there's also an element which is sticky, which we've used and used in the dental material, and it works really well. Um, and so you think, well, this has got to work. Uh, a lot better than the other toothpaste, and it's certainly a lot better than the one you can get on prescription. Why this you can't get this on prescription, but you can get the other one when you still need to add another product, is one of those odd mysteries that you try not to think about. So, yeah, I'd, this was my first mock-up, but um, you'd be pleased to know that this isn't an original Rothko. It's uh, my Rothko that I made because uh, I couldn't have called it, but on, that's the base. And then that was this sort of initial idea on what you would do, and it's, it's not far off, really, um, of my, as I say, my original idea. And then you just sort of progress and mess about. And these, um, this is something called the Biwi. So this is I sent to the graphic designer, because a Biwi is what the uh, children, you know, obviously we all get wear on our teeth, and you can get abnormal wear, People who are stressed and may grind their teeth. That's one of them. The, but the other, the, the, the real big one now at the moment is you women drinking all that Prosecco because you're so happy. Um, so that can dissolve your teeth. So be careful. Don't clean your teeth after you've had your Prosecco. Um, but teenagers, it's just, it's just terrible, terribly sad when you see them coming in. So I used to do what was called a BWE score. And the BWE is uh, the one on the left. So you can sort of, you know, Obviously, it's on the app, so you, there's, it's scored. And um, and the other one, which is the BPE, which is, as you say, directly re uh, related to your general health. Um, I, I did a graphic. I, I, I showed the design, but um, obviously we've got a graphic dis the graphics guy, and that's his job, and clearly is a lot better than me. And uh, so that's what we did. And so interestingly, the... Um, yeah, so I've got an app, and I was I looking thought, well, they did an app. So BWE, I think, was done by Sensodyne because they brought out a toothpaste called Regenerate, which, you know, this is advertising, really, is that because we had more aware of the problem with uh, erosion, as it is, then, you know, you think the toothpaste will make the tooth magically grow. Well, clearly it doesn't. It's a clever name, but it doesn't do what it says on the tin. And I just tried to download the BWE tool, and it, it uh, you can't download it on the App Store, nor can you download the Corsadil. And I, I don't know why. I'd, I've typed in the name. You have a go. But uh, the Corsadil one, surprisingly enough, is for Corsadil, and it explains the the BPE as well. So what you want is something that does both, um, but they only ever you know obviously do for their brand. Um, oh yeah, well that's. I thought I'd get to show a picture of my app, but no, I didn't do that. So you have to be careful, and I think this was this I've now removed as one of the. Actually, I think I think it still is on the app. If you put in my practice, I'm down about three times in my virtual practice. But you know, we can play around with imagery. You have to be careful now. Just what is it? 
yeah, the stuff on the internet and the stuff on Facebook, and that shows fantastic work that's done, but a lot of it is touched up. I haven't been to Turkey and had my hair done. I, I just I just painted it on. Um, if you went on, once that you go on these websites, you go on. I always get the name wrong. Uh, uh, anyway, if you went on a dating website, I think you get found out. Anyway, bald men look a lot better. And yeah, so I would I did the um, QR codes so this. You know, they've been kicking around a long while, but never been taken off. I only ever used to see them in London, wonder what they were. And of course, since COVID, we all know what they are. And so, and I did send off, you know, QR codes with my app saying to Aldi and Boots and, you know, next, you see, I used to go past people looking mysteriously at the, in, at the interdental brushes, which is a very small shelf, you know, it's a, you know, if you go into Sainsbury's, there's a massive aisle full of toothpaste. Really, you know, if you listen, I think it's even said in Simon Sinek's book, you know, that um, there are now about 70 uh, brands of toothpaste, uh, assort brands, d different types of toothpaste, within Colgate when there used to just be four. Really, you want a children's toothpaste. The whitening toothpaste, you know, really, they don't work. Uh, so the children's toothpaste, yes, you want a lower percentage of the fluoride for the children and you need to control that. Um, I'm not going into that now. And the ones that we say that work for gums, well, they, they don't. I think th like one of the toothpastes that used triclosan, um, they had to remove it because in Germany uh, they think it's uh, carcinogenic. Uh, in UK, uh, it's not carcinogenic. Uh, yeah, I worked that one out. One of them is wrong. And so, yeah, th so the idea was that you s I gave this to the the medics across the road. Um, I, I'm not sure if it stayed up long. When you go in, there are masses of um, uh, posters for, for, for looking after your health. But really, any practice, you'd have this on the wall, I would hope, in that um, it gives you some opportunity to at least look at it. Uh, to look at an app and uh, you know and the, the way it should work is, and the way it works in America there's a product called Beam and um, you're able to get discounts on your treatment when you interact with the phone oh so talking of America I'm going to talk over this but I went here in 2015 and so I've, as you know I've made some videos but I couldn't match this and I, and I couldn't match their money oh, I'll turn off the volume because it's so basically th th this is what I was really into is sc scanning teeth for a variety of reasons but the main reason I did it was because you could remove less tooth so you look at you know people who have all these crowns done you remove an awful lot of tooth tissue so a third of the teeth that are crowned a few years ago the nerve of the root would die and it's just because the amount of tooth you get taken taken off well now the adhesives are really a lot better and you can glue wipe fillings on teeth as you know lots of people are having these cosmetic smiles and where they just glue a composite onto the front of the teeth this is better in that you can glue a, a solid piece that's made on a milling machine and you can do all kinds of fancy stuff and this was so I was there I think I'm at one other Brit there of the 5,000 who were there and you can see it's a bit of a big hall so you know this is the stuff that I do is the scanning but the scanner I bought now is out of date. The, the one I bought back in the day, the whole kit cost about 70,000. And now it costs about 20,000 and is twice as, well, four times as good, a lot easier to use as well. A bit like when I started with a PC. So Train, they played, um, if you've heard of Train. And um, this guy was about to say how much money they'd made. I think at that time, big company Densply, and I think it was Serona, they merged together and they opened the NASDAQ which meant it was a, like a two billion pound company. So that they rang the NASDAQ bell. So this is the stuff that I was using, but now it's moved on. You don't have to spray powder all over your teeth and you can take really good pictures of the teeth. But the, the you know, a lot of things here, are, you know, it is about making a living and it's, it's where you join it. So this was Tony Robbins. He's a real motivator, Everett Smith. He's, um, he's like David Beckham, but for the American football, the wrong one. 
and um, oh, it's a fantastic show. And then they w yeah, they brought this out, and it, it was a, it's got all this all the bits on it. It was a fantastic bit of kit. It cost a huge amount of money. I don't know about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars or whatever. And they bought the the guy that bought it there and then. He was aged eighty two. <laughs> so that says a lot. Uh, anyway. I really like this kind of kit, but I did use it differently. And when we were out there, um, they had a series of talks from different people and they, they developed something, or rather those that weren't dentists who were the chemists, I think, they, they were really pleased with the material they were using, which is I was using back in Bristol, which is a hybrid material. But I couldn't get hold of it. And the reason was, the um, I don't know, I slipped across, is that they'd had problems in the States and it transpired the problems, you know, caused people to get sued and fail, but they were just using the material incorrectly. So this is, I used to do a lot of crowns using the material on the health service, and they worked fantastically well. Um, and you, you, you hung on to a lot more tooth tissue, so this is a, um, you know, an excuse to put up a picture that I took there. But if you were a dentist, you'd say, now that is odd, that is different. But that's the way it should be. You should be touching the teeth as little as possible. And so that's what I always tried to do. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, and these are the sort of cases. So I did take pictures of them, but I ended up returning. And I thought, well, this will kind of, you have to be interested in what you do. So, and if any dentists looking at it, they're probably thinking, what, what's he done there? Um, but some of the things I was able to restore, um, and amazing, you know, like in the middle of that, there's a, there's, there's a bridge on the temporary material. And I know my, uh, my ex-nurse bumped into the patient. So it was a temporary. She didn't want a denture. It was on the health service. And the bridge that I made out of a, out of a plastic material on a milling machine is still there. It's been there 10 years. And, yeah, so I'm... I think with a lot of health things, it's it's difficult to do um, good research or even try things out f from fear of being sued. Well, that is a big problem. But we've over the last few years, this became sort of more popular, and it's based on um, you know it's a tooth thing, but it's based on what one person did in Scotland, in probably in the middle of nowhere, and it wasn't until so it's it's difficult to know if the tr story is true. But she was doing a technique that most did, but was kind of doing it incorrectly. But it worked. So sometimes, you know, she, and she's not alone. There was, uh, we have what we call the doll effect, which you use for braces in the UK. I don't think they use it in the States, you know, or they don't agree with it in the States, but it, it does work. So this doll effect uh, was based on one case. So whenever you do research, you know, it has to be evidence-based, but... Two of the major things that doing dentistry are based on a single person. And as you can see, uh, if you want to look it up, it's more readable if you look it up on Wikipedia, where, as I said before, most doctors look. Uh, right, OK, the, this picture was um, obviously from the newspaper, but uh, they, and they went out yesterday. I was at a course in gerodontology, and... Uh, the reason I put it in is I've been to so many courses where at the back you'd see the presenter saying, well, you know, yeah, I know you can't do this on the health service. And we have a problem now that we just can't get access. You can't get access, you know, and there are lots of reasons for that. But this is the main one. There's the, the, the health service it says it'll provide everything. But, uh, you know, the nurses have gone on strike. Well, it's not the dentists. Certainly not the vast majority. Most went private because they wanted to provide good work. Uh, the dental corporates, some are extremely good um, and some aren't so good. Uh, and also the, the problem with the corporate is, is in effect they don't take responsibility for the work but they put the, the people doing the work, which is all their staff. It's not just dentists, the receptionists, the, the nurses. Everybody gets the grief. Um, I've got some grim experience of that myself. And the public, you know, the public as we know, uh, they're far more litigious than when I qualified. Uh, we have twice as many cases than the last looked about, 
uh, compared to America, and that's partly because of partly because of these these advertised. If you're not happy with your dentist a few years back, then complain to us, and and we have to pay the GDC. You, you know, it's just you just couldn't make it up. And this uh, the dental law partnership, I think they're called. Yeah, yeah, there's the, the dentist who uh, was with them. He's the highest paying dent paid dentist I would imagine in the UK he's got at least 50 solicitors working for him uh, and yeah it's, it's, it's the equivalent of ambulance chasing and it's it's just clearly wrong that you know, six times as many lawyers qualify as, as many medics there used to be one you know, 100 years ago it was the same number and yeah if, uh, politics uh, they've just changed the sugar tax uh, I mean, they've backtracked on the sugar tax. They've backtracked on the thing about Facebook and um, youngsters seeing, you know, bad images. It just, big business just gets in the way for the individual. And, and this is where we made a mistake. And I made this video. Dental litigation is a problem. It seems to have increased after the millennium. The biggest dental negligence firm was established. <laughs> yeah, so, so initially I made this when I was still working, but I put it in Spanish. And, and you know, so what's happening now is IT has improved so much that this was made just by uh, following the, the, the text. And so all practices can kind of use this. The problem is that, um, you know, to be interested in your job, you want to you do extra learning, but some of the learning is a bit dull. And, um, and if you specialise, you know, actually, you can look at it both ways, in that you're doing it for your own interests, uh, but you're running out of people who can afford it. And we have this problem now that you know general dentists are, are struggling to do anything um, that's remotely tricky because one they'll get sued, and um, if, it, if you get a poor outcome, which isn't the same as doing it poorly. And the same thing we've always had about um, what is supervised neglect when clearly supervised neglect depends who you're talking to. If you've been neglecting that tooth for 30 years and it's still there, that's not neglect. Anyway, this is the state we're going to be in. I always think of the Hunger Games. In, I just, if you've seen it, you'll know that there are a few people who have seem to have everything. And here there's probably a bit of Botox going on. There's probably a bit of dermal filler. She probably had ortho. And she, yeah, she, she probably had some cosmetic uh, what is it, uh, composite buildups I mean it's um, <laughs> we need to get a balance but I can understand all dentists doing this because you you know it's an easier way to make money without uh, such a threat of being sued so yeah so th th this is something that we should do and um, yes yeah, so this is a this is this was recent and it, you can just paint the teeth with a solution and uh, it'll help arrest decay and give you time if you're working for someone who in this instance had cancer um, but on the other hand it'll work for people at, at, you know it works extremely well for, for children and as this shows it's the outcomes are the same if you do the, what we call art or if you just do this and this can be you know quite frankly this can be done by well, I would imagine a dental nurse, never mind a therapist. Um, hygienists can do it. If they can paint on um, sealants, then they can do this. And uh, they have more, more likely to get access to care homes or want to do care homes because, you know, you don't need to have great skill to do this. Um, and these things are, ju are just not used in the UK when they're used more abroad and they're getting used more and more. Um, so we should be doing that. And yeah, when it comes to root fillings, again about specialisation, if you do a root filling on the health service, uh, we used to get paid uh, back in the day less <laughs> uh, than it costs in the instruments to, that you would use. And so we all know this, the root fillings I d did at the end, I hardly had any failures and it was not great shakes, but there's lots of stuff about this that's... Um, that's poor. So this is this was um, showing it was something that the chief dental officer mentioned when we had the when COVID uh, and recommended the thing before silver diamine fluoride recommended doing the SVEC technique for 
group fillings, all things that most people were blissfully unaware of, and I'm talking about the dentists now. And the other thing was about teledentistry, and we should be doing that. As you can see here, this isn't ideal. If you have a, you know, a root filling from a, um, a specialist, you would hope to get you know, about 98% success or a good outcome. Um, and it'll prob <laughs> probably cost you £750. Some dentists might be prepared to do this on these spec technique on the, on the health service if, if it still exists, but not if they're going to get sued when you get a poor outcome that just basically means to need to pay the 750 for the expert root filling. And now we've got yeah, teledentistry. So, so the, 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 the iPhones, the, the smartphones can take great photos, so you just need to know how to manipulate your soft tissue. It's not so, difficult, not so easy to show the insides of the teeth, but these are taken using a camera. And these cameras, uh, the first camera I bought was like six, seven thousand um, pounds. And this is just from a camera I bought on the internet for, for 40 pounds. And uh, next year it'll be £30 and it'll be better. Uh, and we just need someone to look at them to tell you, you know, how long you need to come in or to give you oral hygiene advice. It's ridiculous that you have to come in. And it's very green. You know, you can get the advice you need or your child needs over the phone. Uh, from, and we can both be at home <laughs> doing it, which frees up surgery time, which might help with waiting lists. Yeah, and this is really for our mental health. I used to run a peer review for, for 10 years. And um, we stopped doing it because we stopped getting paid for it. But basically, we should do it for our mental health. And it's the best way to learn. So if I went on a course or anyone else went on a course, we could always uh, ring back. And one of the reasons I've ended up doing this is a guy gave give a talk on, on cancer, as you know. And uh, we need to be checking ourselves once a month for cancer. <laughs> I did a, a survey and asked patients what they prefer to check themselves once a month or to be seen once a year by the dentist. And everyone said once a year. And I thought I must have just phrased it or what's it called, framed the question incorrectly. So there's a few th things here, you know. So I'm allowed to say, I, th I think I lost the one on root fillings. There's a one on root fillings, but oh yeah, it's bottom right. But this is the one I was going to show because it's, it's minimal. Yeah, and the guy started in the garner, so. Let's cut my tree down. Anyway, so you can read this, so pause uh, and read it. But basically, this is using uh, um, scanning equipment in a different way. And um, yeah, it, straight out of practice, and it's straight into practice, I wouldn't want to be doing this. But I've been seeing this, trying to keep this lady going for many years, and she used to see the hygienist every three months. And um, yeah. So this is what you're left with, and um, yeah. So she never ever had uh, she never ever had a denture, and so it is minimal de invasive dentistry, but it's just there wasn't much to work with. All right. So this is me. I'm still going to fight against the oh, it's next door doing the leaves. Oh, just oh yeah. As on my t-shirt, just do it. The worst comes to the worst. You Oh, sorry, that was a bit loud. Um, should we do it again? <laughs> I don't think I can. But anyway, I think ITs are not easier than dentistry. That's what I was saying, is that if you make a mistake in IT, you can go back, but I'm not going to go back. And this is because I want to spend more time in my van. But I, I want to share what we've, what we've learned over the years. Dentistry now, I think, is going back, not forward. These are people that supported me when I've tried to promote prevention. Um, there's an awful lot we can do. Um, I don't think I put the slide up, um, but I did make a, a webinar. But so if you go for teethforlife.org.uk, then um, yeah, I probably ought to put that slide in. <laughs>